Hey YouTube, it's JP Dillon. Today we're going to try to finish off the uh, Kalara changer and really the primary things that are left other than cleaning it up a little bit is the uh, old questionable idler wheel and some wiring for the tone arm which is uh, kind of haphazardly done here so we need to take care of that now the way to spot a bad idler wheel pick it up and feel it if the rubber is no longer soft if it's hard as a rock or cracking or crumbling obviously you need to send it out for rebuilding and uh, there are a couple of choices my personal favorite if you're willing to spend a couple bucks more is Terry's rubber rollers uh, however the test is stick your fingernail in it and see if the rubber pops back and we can see that that's got a little bit of a divot in it so the fact that the edge there is kind of cracked and crumbling we're going to take a chance take some 1000 grit sandpaper and resurface the edge and see if we can restore it well enough so that it will run the turntable so let's get that started okay so what typically I will do is I will rotate as I drag like this and I will get the bad stuff off I'm gonna need two hands to do this so just because this wants to move around so let me get this resurfaced and then we'll take a look at it do the fingernail test again and see if it's worthy of putting back in the turntable all right so we took our stab at it see if I can get it to focus here you can see all the crack portions are gone we can rotate it it looks pretty good and if we do the fingernail test we can see that the rubber pops back out so this is a usable thing we can put it back in the uh, turntable all right so I've already lubricated that shaft you can see that the spin down on that's very reasonable I've saved a little tiny washer and screw that go with it which are over here and I'll probably need a little tiny tool to get that in there for God's sake do not cross thread this screw or you will have a hell of a time trying to keep the idler on there all right, let me get a tool. All right, that's happy. You may wish to resurface this one too. This one's still in pretty good shape. It's very soft, so I think it won't have an issue. We've already seen it cycle successfully on its own, so I'm not really worried about it. And then that still spins wonderfully. So, before we get into the tone arm wiring, I'm sure you're wondering how do we clean this thing? Because it's kind of scuzzy and ugly looking. Well, I'll show you how I typically deal with it. Uh, if possible, remove the knobs, just take them off. And then you may wish to take your stylus out so that you don't end up murdering it when you're cleaning underneath the arm. I'm going to go ahead and do that and then I'll show you what I use. You can see that the original color underneath all the nicotine tar is uh, much more favorable. Kind of looks like what the underneath of the platter does. So we're going to clean all this up, clean the brass up. Uh, at the very least, I don't know if I'm going to get chemicals and stuff all up in here just because I don't want to risk gunking up the motor or any of the work that I've done. So we're going to focus on the outside, the tone arm, trim pieces, plastic, etc. And I'll show you what I do to do, deal with that. Alright, so to clean things, typically I just use the standard Windex that you buy in your grocery store, whatever. The, uh, something in the ammonia, or actually it is the ammonia, that will uh, get rid of the nicotine tar. And so I'm just going to saturate Have to clean that idler wheel again let's move this out of the way and of course that's not going to work because you know and you just let that sit for a little while maybe five ten minutes 
and then uh, it usually attacks the uh, nicotine tar pretty well. I'm just going to spray up the arm. Not enough to get in things. And so uh, we'll wait about five minutes and we'll come back to this. Alright, so it's been about five minutes. I've got a toothbrush. I've got my shop towels for wiping it down. And we're just going to go in a circular motion here. And you can see that it dissolves all of the nasty smoker's tar pretty well. And it's just a persistence elbow grease type thing. You're just going to want to scrub all, scrub all this trash off of here. Already starting to look better already. Just cuts right through it. Now imagine doing this on an entire cabinet. That's what I had to do on the console cabinet because it was just so filthy. It was one of those things where you could just be in the presence of that cabinet and it would just be disgusting smelling. Just And uh, just don't want that in your house. You know, unless you can't smell anymore, then I guess it doesn't matter. So it's just a game of patience. And do the sides, everything, clean it all up. Kind of disgusting, huh? You'll see when I'm done cleaning all this off uh, how much different it looks. Let's latch that down. Look at that, it's changing colors right before your eyes. So this is why people typically don't want to buy stuff that's been in a smoker's house. Just because tarry residues and smells. And we may have to go over this a couple more times before everything's actually clean. But yeah. That's it all uh, loosened up there, and so excuse me just a second. Gotta try to hold this and clean it at the same time. There we go. So now we're just gonna wipe, wipe it away. Well, look at how nice that looks. Such a difference. Brings back that original gold finish. See, there's your difference before and after. The middle's before and rest is after. Pretty gross, huh? Tone arm's a nice silver color again at the end here. Our record clamping arm. That's looking a lot better. And yeah, you're going to need multiple paper towels because this stuff is disgusting. And you may wish to do multiple rounds of this. Depends on how clean you want it. Sorry, here I'm trying to keep cleaning this and keep everything in the camera's view so you can see it. Clean that little smudge of garbage there off of the armrest. And I'll move this out of the way. Clean over here, underneath the arm, around the arm post here. 
And if you want to get super tidy with it, you can get some Q-tips, which we're going to do in cleaning in all the little crevices, because I don't want the Windex to dry in there, really. Look at how crazy different that looks from the original tar that's in the middle there. Yeah, we can try and eh, just kind of wipe this down just a little. We'll reclean our idlers. I don't want any of that gunk on there. A lot nicer looking. Got a little bit of overspray on our platter here too. Okay. What a difference, huh? Looks very nice. Even uncovered a little paint chute here, which I hadn't seen before. Now, if you want to remove the patina of this, I kind of like the way it looks as is, but if you want to polish it up, it is brass. Very thin layer of brass plating on there, so you got to be really careful. Uh, a little bit of brass on a Q-tip will usually do those. I'm going to leave those alone. If you want to mess with them, you can. I just kind of like the old look of it. As far as the arm, Novus Number 2 Plastic Polish will make this look nice and pretty. And since that's a two-handed job, I'm going to do that, and then I'll show you the before and after. So take a good look at this now. It's got a little bit of haze on it. It's not perfect looking. But then we'll, uh, we'll clean that up. And after we clean up the idler wheels, one more thing to do before you put it back together is clean the platter rim. See the skid mark there where the idler's been hitting for umpteen bajillion years? You need to clean all that off, too, because that will affect your speed. And then we'll see if we can do the same Windex treatment with this mat and see if we can't clean the mat up a little bit because the mat looks kind of gross. We'll clean the knobs with Windex, let them sit and scrub them up. But so far, it's looking a whole lot prettier. So let me polish up the arm, and then we'll uh, clean the mat. Alright, so here it is pretty much all cleaned up. I got the mat clean as best as I could. It still doesn't look perfect, but... It's uh, another astonishing thing is it's still very soft and supple. Clean the knobs, clean the deck. And you can see the arms, the plastic parts here are a lot shinier. Uh, this is the stuff to grab, the Novus number two. Uh, works out nicely. Just be careful when you're moving around the arm that you don't catch the paper towel on the trim piece. You'll break it off. Uh, don't polish too much or you'll rub the paint off here. The plastic polish actually took care of some of the tarnish on the silver pieces up top here. It is a super fine polish. It's like, you know, 4,000 grit wet sanding type thing. But anyway, uh, cosmetically, it looks very nice. So let's deal with the problem with the tone arm wiring and then see if we can't get it to play some tunes. Okay, so here we are back on the bench. And really, the only obvious thing that has happened here is that the ground, which is this part of the coax here, that probably has come loose from the muting switch here. And that's easy to resolder. Now this resistor you see here, this this is a one meg resistor. And if you look carefully, you can see it's going between the left channel hot side and the right channel hot side. That's a blending resistor. Now this is from a 1959 console. And so many of the albums that people were playing on these uh, were still manoral. And so what they did was they stuck a blending resistor between the channels so that if you were playing a manoral record, the amount of surface noise in theory would be cut down slightly because of the blending resistor. Also, if you had a stereo album with wide pan, like, you know, the early Beatles stuff where the band was in the left channel and the vocals were in the right and there was nothing in the middle, that this in theory was supposed to help that. Now, I tend to want to remove these because I like true stereo separation, but you may want to keep the nostalgia of the original resistor in place. You can do whatever you want. It's your console. I'm going to remove this one. 
and then we'll reattach the ground to the post there which has come off and then maybe try to route this coax away from things or strap it up here away from the cycling mechanism because as I recall when we were working on this the cable got in the way of something I don't remember what it was but it got in the way of something anyway you can see here that they had a little plastic doodad which probably routed it and stuck it up over here uh, yeah, maybe I can figure out something to make that work. Of course, if I do that, then it's going to interfere with putting it back in the cabinet, so maybe that's not it. Anyway, so reattach the ground, out comes the blending resistor, and then we'll uh, cinch it up a little bit. All right, so now that it's all cleaned up, let's see if it's actually capable of playing a record correctly. It's been sitting a while so that we can kind of verify if there's any more sticky greases or anything to deal with. So this is going to require two hands. Put that there. All right. So it's being held there. It's unlatched. I'm only going to play a second or two of the song just because copyright reasons. And let's go ahead and fire it off. See what it does. It's a good sign. All right, and let's see if it gets to the end. It picks up. It does. Very cool. And it shuts off. So, one test of these is to let them sit for a couple weeks before you fire them up again. Because if you missed any sticky grease, the mechanism is gonna malfunction. And that's how you kind of know you need to go back over your work. Now, if you were to fully disassemble this like a madman and take probably a good five or six hours cleaning, resurfacing, and relubricating every part, there's a good chance you wouldn't really need to do that. But um, as long as you use these, they'll continue to work properly. But if they sit a long time, they don't like that. So this one's going to go back in the console because it's done now. And uh, then we'll fire up the console and see... Uh, what that sounds like. Okay, so if y'all are curious, this is what it's going into. I don't remember whether this is a 58 or a 59 Magnavox Imperial, but it, it is. Let's see if the tag's still on the back. Yeah, I can't find anything about it. This was originally uh, a restoration for a customer, but they backed out on it and just gave it to me. So I've done the recap work on the chassis and new electrolytics and couplings in the tuner, but the tuner still needs a bunch of tubes and an alignment and I have to be out of this building in the next month or less so there's really no time for me to screw with it with everything else going on but we'll take a quick listen to it go to AM first And boy, did I really feel smart. In its current state, you're not going to get a whole lot out of the FM. That's my aux cable, and when you turn it over to stereo, it secedes power to the turntable, <clears throat> which is silly, because basically now you have to wait for the tubes to warm up again while things cycle. So let's get a record on it, and let's go ahead and fire it up again.
Again, I'll get a copyright strike if I let that play for too long. Uh, did I mention that this also has the wired remote, which basically just initiates the change cycle. And it doesn't start the turntable, it just initiates the cycle. So the turntable already has to be running for this to work. It's on a big, giant, long cord. And then you see when we press the button, it's supposed to fire the solenoid. It was earlier. So maybe there's an intermittent in the cord or something. I know the switch is good because I ohmed this out. But in any case, it sounds really good. It gets stupid loud. So, yeah. This is going to be up for adoption. So if anybody wants to nail a 58 or a 59 Magnavox Imperial to tinker with, this is kind of the one you want. Uh, the glass is in good shape. The interior is in good shape. Let's see if we can fire up the little lamp here so you can see it. That's in nice shape there. The radio portion is going to need work, but as you can see the grill cloth is nicely intact except for that little stain there. I do think I have the third foot for it somewhere, unless that was for another set. But yeah, there you go. I haven't put the backpack on it yet, so let's take a peer inside of all the vacuum bulbs. So there's the chassis there. It's a uh, push pull 6v6, two sets for the woofer, and then two 6v6 in class A for the tweeters. Um, the reason why you see that unplugged, that was for the reverb loop. Uh, and I just ended up plugging the uh, preamp directly into the amplifier to save on hum and noise. It's got a plethora of inputs. You've got your multiplex out, record out. I'm using MPX as an aux cable, which you could plug in a Bluetooth adapter or something to. Um, but yeah, this thing's going to be up for adoption just because I need it gone. It's a nice set, but I don't have any room in the house for it, and it can't stay here. Let me fiddle with the remote a little bit more and see if I can get it to trigger. Yeah, so it looks like the remote lost its continuity, so that needs to be fixed, but again, it does have the remote. Either there's something lost in continuity to the solenoid underneath the turntable or something in the cord itself, but it doesn't fire anymore. It appears to be connected to the terminal strip at the amplifier, so something in between is messed up. But anyway, uh, I hope you've enjoyed this series about fixing up your Magnavox turntable. One thing I notice on this is that the little clutch pad underneath the arm is pretty worn. And it does struggle to return sometimes. See that time it didn't get there all the way. Got back to the start point though. I may see if I can try to fix that. But I don't know if that's salvageable. There's a little, uh, what is it, cork plate that uh, when the cycling's engaged presses up against a metal disc at the base of the arm that acts as the clutch. And the material's pretty worn out on this one. But I'll see if I can tinker with it. And then, uh, yeah, this one's going up for adoption. So I'll explain all that in the description of ePay. And then if you guys want it, you can have a crack at it. But in any case, I uh, hope this was helpful for you in servicing this Calaro turntable. And uh, this has got to get out of here. So it goes bye-bye. Thanks for watching the videos, guys. More stuff to come. And if you're curious, that's the clutch I'm talking about. You see that separation there? Push up on it. That's the material that's the clutch material. And it's starting to deteriorate and get all gooey. So that's the reason why it's not always returning. Uh, what I am going to do is see if I can clean this area a little bit more. 
and see if I can get it to grip a little better but for now I think it's just wore out so that's the the infamous clutch I keep talking about that's responsible for gripping the arm during the cycling process and that material has to be in good shape and this one's not so yeah just thought I'd share that little tidbit uh, looking here where the solenoid is I'm gonna ohm out that solenoid real quick so I got four ohms on the solenoid which I'm connecting directly to the pins here with my meter so the solenoid's good so there's some sort of interruption in the electricity path between the uh, solenoid and the remote changer but it's probably not impossible to fix so yeah just for the next person that's gonna mess with it little crib notes